Hallo allemaal, welkom bij het programma Dutch TV, het programma voor iedereen met een Nederlandse link. Vandaag gaan we weer verder over de vergulde draak. Afgelopen week hebben we Bob Sheffert ontmoet en hij heeft ons al van de ene verbazing in de andere laten gaan. Um, laten we maar snel kijken, want uh, we hebben maar 30 minuutjes. Dus veel plezier. <laughs> Things which are mutton shells, yeah, fairly small. So we get these uh, haliotis, which is um, abalone. There's abalone here as well. So you find these scattered along the top. There. It's hard to know whether these are indigenous or whether these are shipwreck survivors. Right. But one of the... I don't know whether the indigenous people would worry about one that size. Um, they can Here, be better than that. you'd light a fire um, if you see a ship coming. Yeah. But there's... Uh, the back's off a little shell. I'll see if I can find one for you. called a, a chiton. Mm -hmm. C-H-I-T-O-N. Um, Averages weren't that keen on them. No. A lot of hard work and not a lot of, tip, a lot of, lot of uh, protein. But there's quite a few of them up here, which means maybe the Dutch were actually counting them up and trying to make a soup out of them. They were desperate that eating. Yeah. So there could be evidence here. Yeah. Not a good spot. Not a good spot. You know, because here you can really make the smoke go up. Well, they were here for with a little boat for 10 days. That's this is, right. It's not really a very good spot to anchor a little no, boat. No, it's not. The Eagle's Nest is a much better spot. Yeah. Here's not good. I've launched boats here. But and we know it's come here. A, come a guts there quite a few times. Yeah. Not good. But pull down there, you just got to do it properly. Back in the 1960s, this rock wall that you've got here on the front was actually this high. It was up to here. The rocks were piled up to here. You could just see over, you could stand inside the cave and you could peer over the top. And there was a little entranceway just here. Nobody knows who built the rock wall. Maybe maybe the Dutch built it. There's some, some discussion as to whether it might have been a lookout post in the Second World War. We know the light horse were doing coastal patrols along here. Um, but it could also have been Dutch. Then sometime in the, in the 70s or 80s, somebody got in here and knocked the wall down threw all the wall out there and got in with a shovel and this had sand up to about here and shoveled it all out and swept it clean. Um, and we had no idea what came out of it. So obviously they were looking for the treasure. We don't know if they found anything. I'd, I'd really like to know if somebody could tell me. I, I don't care who did it. It's all past history now but I'd really like to know if they found anything interesting. We do have a report. So how long ago is that you think? We have a yeah, you can go with it. We did have a report. Oh, no, it might have been 1980s when it was dug out, I think. It could have been a little bit later. These people can, that live here can remember the wall here, and I've got photos of the wall from the 60s. But we do know that somebody found a little handmade copper fish hook in a cave somewhere along here. So it's my, most likely this cave, and this was dug out because of the fish hook. But what gets better are the engravings on the cave wall. Yeah, because these are the most important engravings here. There's a three three letters. I'm not sure that's behind you, Nonya. Just give me a second. We've got some up here. Oh yeah. We've got another one there. But there's a. I think it might be the glass. Oh, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Where is it? There's a V. Was it three, three, nearly 400 years ago? There's a V yeah. with a seraph on it. Where is it? Oh, it's over here. This one. There. See? So, did you get this one too? Yeah, I think that one's more recent. This one here looks like it could be the ridgy ditch. You can see how the, the V compares with the ones oh, on wow. the coastal stones. See the, yeah. see the seraph yeah. on the top there, there? Yeah. And there's other, other engravings there. Maybe this bit's snapped off, who knows? Yeah. But there could have been... Yeah. Maybe dig here. We left a bottle here, who knows? That's exactly right. And that's what we might have taken. Um, and there's a couple of some pet engravings here. That's been pecked in. Um, we yeah. think we know who did yeah. these. These are modern. Don't know about that one. Um, but we've never really done a big scan of the entire wall and had a look for any more. 
But that one's yes. that one looks like it's here. It was. That looks the same as the cannon uh, yeah, at the same yeah. insignia. So we really are trying to protect the location of that, yes. not too many people know about that. But for me, this is really, this is cool. Yeah, yeah it's cool. That's it's right. the way it is. So. That's what I said. So the best to last. Yeah, that's yeah. absolutely. So it's just about all over. So what a perfect spot. Look at that. I mean, yeah. And you can see ships if they're coming quickly yeah, by the right. fire. You can sit here and put, set your fire Get up the, the matches. top. Get the matches. <laughs> um, and there's the, there's the wreck site straight out there. Yeah, so that is logical. So you learn thing. to have a smouldering fire, so you can quickly go out there and light the fire if you see a ship. Yeah. yeah. yeah you could oh, be a shipwreck uh, survivor. <laughs> got a few clues, We've also got a story about a rock structure that was down yeah. um, close to the bottom of the cliff, a, few, a, a circle or a, a circle of rocks. I, I've I hate, heard of that. I hate, I hate using the word ring of stones because yeah. it gets associated with that thing up at any other. Yeah. But it looks like there was a really old structure there. Some of the older members of the community can remember it. Um, and we've had a look and we can't find it. Um, but it's buried under the sand now. So we wonder what it would mean. Mm. Is it a religious thing, you know? No, I think it's just a camp. Okay. Yeah. You'd have to go looking for circles of stone in the religions of the Netherlands at the time. But what about the stone well, not just that, it, right across Europe, we had such a diverse yeah. people on there. So what is the relation between the eagle's nest and this one, you think? Okay, my theory is that they came ashore here and they were here for a little while. The, I, I think that the second boat, the biggest boat, was was swamped somewhere here. And I've been in and out of this, this little section of beach here with a boat a few times and it's always dangerous. And some of my friends have broken ribs and things trying to launch little boats here. It's a really, really bad spot to launch a boat. I think this is where they landed. They probably did some investigation, thought about it, and I think they went down to Eagle's Nest and camped down there. They probably shifted their camp, took the little boat with a few people down there. They probably safer anchorage, anchored the little boat down there. Eventually they got the bigger boat um, up on its, out of the surf, managed to salvage it. And this little section on the coast here is an ideal capture point for the wreckage from the Vigolda Dra. So the evidence that we're seeing now with the, with the material that we're finding, the big iron fastenings and those sorts of things which are almost certainly from the Vigolda Drac which was wrecked 5 or 6 k's out there, is that it all washed up on this section of the beach. I would think that they would have salvaged some of that material, probably built up the sides of their boat. They were very good at that. Mm. They, they modified the sides of their boat to build the sides up by maybe a couple of feet um, so that they could uh, handle it in bad weather because the big boats were barges, fairly flat bottom, not really good yeah. ocean going boats so they needed to make sure that they didn't get swamped. Um, we have reports of up to 100 people getting into those boats, they actually had situations where 100 survivors got into one of those small boats, they actually laid the oars across the top of the boat and they took it in turns, 50 people sitting on the oars and 50 people sitting in the bottom of the boat and changed every 12 hours. Um, to avoid being uh, yeah, cramped. Yeah. Um, if you go to Geraldton, there's the <laughs> Batavia. We've got a cramp story for yeah. you in a minute. The Batavia replica <laughs> boat, yeah. uh, which they built up there, absolutely fantastic. They put 45 people in that on their Brolis Islands and only dropped the side of the boat by, I think, 45 centimetres. It's a fairly large boat, so yeah. you, get, you get 45 people in without any trouble. 68, I don't think it'd be a problem if you, if you built the sides up. Uh, yeah. I think they got the boat up out of the water got everybody in it with whatever they could to survive, sailed off out there somewhere and... There's been talk that there's um, further up, there's something in Dora, Dora Island, Dora. People, there's a 1923 report of some in a cave that, that they found stuff that they think was linked to Dutch shipwrecks. Okay, no, I haven't heard that. I'd really like to hear that story. Yeah, um, I'll send you the link. And there's also, I think, some interesting story links to the Abrolhos because the Zaywick, when that wrecked on the Abrolhos, they found evidence of an earlier Dutch shipwreck on, on the islands where they were wrecked. Right. And they could have actually been um, from, from yeah. survivors. That, and yeah. recently, uh, Hugh Edwards and his team went up to the Abrolhos and they found one of the silver coins from Spain, which is almost identical to the ones that the Edwards boys found down in the Money Desert. Oh. Uh, same vintage, same type of coin. Maybe there was a few people on the, the Golden Drought that had those coins. Maybe they ended up on their bolus in the small boat, came to grief. That'll be interesting. So, 
that's where I'd like to take the investigation to. My my interest would be in the records mm. and finding out if anything's been written. Of somebody, would, they would have asked in Batavia, who do you remember survived? Who's the 68 that are there? Yeah. There must be in the correspondence something because family in the Netherlands. They'd want to know. They'd want to know. Yeah. And they could say so many people didn't, but we know these did. You, you know, something like that. And that would give us a lot of evidence if you really wanted to do more studies. That's there. right. Well, you know, well, you know the, the letters, yeah. the half a dozen letters from the survivors that were here, well, they had writing material, obviously, and they wrote letters to give to the seven people to take back to the table. Those letters would be saying things like, we are wrecked on the most miserable place in the world. That's we have right. no water, no food. We have seen um, local inhabitants. We have seen. And we're going fires. to go and do this. We're going to do this, or we have many. We, yeah. we are going to try. Well, we know they tried to. They, the two things were they were going to try and recover the boat, and some of them were going inland to try and find water. Right. Yes. That's the two things that we know. That's right. So. That's all we know. Yeah. But there's got to be more stuff. Yeah. So we'll get Charles onto this as mm. well. Absolutely. It's really important because he knows where the stuff everywhere, everything is, you know, mm. or how we might go start locating stuff from that period, what chances we've got of stuff being found here or there or other archive. Yeah. Like, for instance, the stuff's only starting to come out everywhere. In, in India, they've just started to digitise all stuff from Bengal, from Chinsura, which is a VOC settlement. So a university there is getting interested now. So they're, yeah. they're actually the presidents of universities digitising. That's helped yeah. me with research on stuff that's happened here, would you believe? Yeah. Yeah, and, and Nonya, my, my research has been relatively confined to a certain section of the coast. But when you start digging into the records, you actually find more leads further afield. Uh, I hear more stories of material, possible Dutch material found closer to Perth. I hear stories of um, more material being found closer to Lanceland and beyond. And I, and I haven't even investigated that. I've just stuck with this one section of the coast because this is the obvious site where they came ashore. But we don't know what happened after that. I'm, I'm, I have to say that as a, a woman and wanting to be cool, and they would, that if there were families there at all, the women are going to say, we're staying here. Just put another wall up, you know, because you guys go looking for the water and the, and the fish, mm. and we'll stay here with any children, you know, because it's protected. You can see if anything's coming. You, you protected, and that was to protect them from anything else, you know, yeah. maybe snakes or whatever. We, we don't even have a passenger. We don't even know who was on the boat. But we do, we do with the Batavia and other ships, and I can't understand why we don't know who's on, well, on the boat. Well, that's right. There should be a list. They, they, well, there should be. No, didn't, I know that Tom van der Velt, not Tom van der Velt, Tom van der Velt has done a lot of work, especially for the archives in uh, transcribing shipping lists, yeah. to, and put it on the op farm and then. But that doesn't mean to say that a lot of stuff is also chucked away at that period. But that doesn't mean to say it's not the, or that there's a duplicate, because they used to do duplicates mm. in those days. But it means scouring archives in Batavia, South Africa and The Hague. Yeah. And uh, the stuff Wendy and I wanted to get money for, we've tried now a couple of times, it, well, we want to do another time, is to do that. Mm. She wants to do the archaeological stuff on, but I want to do the archival stuff. Yeah. And no, she, she can help because we can read the stuff when we get it, yeah. you know. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to collaborate with that. So okay, we've got to keep moving, guys. Okay. Okay, when you switch that up, I just want to tell you And uh, the stuff Wendy and I wanted to get money for, we've tried now a couple of times, it, well, we want to do another time, is to do that. She mm. wants to do the archaeological stuff on, but I want to do the archival stuff. Yeah. And no, she, she can help because we can read the stuff when we get it, yeah. you know. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to collaborate with that. Okay, we've got to keep moving, guys. Okay. okay. En nu zijn we dan aangekomen aan het einde van deze film. Ik hoop dat jullie net zo genoten hebben als ik van al deze nieuwe weetjes. En ik denk dat het tijd is dat archeologen dit gebied nog verder gaan onderzoeken.